Welcome to the staff meeting at Marina Hills Animal Hospital. No duck, no justice. If you don't know what that means, go to Facebook, find the Bangor, Maine Police Department's Facebook page, and you'll understand. Um, today, for our medical moment, we're going to talk about laryngeal paralysis. Uh, as you know, dogs have lips and teeth and a tongue and air and food and water all goes past their lips, their teeth, and their tongue. But at the back of the throat, those things change paths. And air goes down their airway, and food and water goes down their esophagus, to their stomach. And on a good day, there's no confusion. And we never get food and water into our airways, and we don't gulp air into our esophagus. And the way that happens is by the help of the larynx. The larynx is the uh, organ at the top of the trachea, at the top of the airway. And it has a lot of different functions, but perhaps the most important is its trapdoor function. Uh, the very top structure at the larynx is called the arytenoid cartilages, and they open when dogs breathe, and they close when they eat their lunch. And by closing, in combination with the epiglottis, they prevent food and water from going down the airway. Sometimes that mechanism doesn't work, and it never opens all the way, and it never closes all the way. And the result is that pets who have that problem breathe very loudly. We call it roaring. Uh, even when they're, well, when it first starts, it's most noticeable when they're exercising. Instead of having a nice, easy, easy breath, they have a restriction at the top of their airway, so it sounds like a <laughs> roaring sound. Uh, and as that condition worsens, they can be making that sound not just when they're exercising, but when they're just laying around watching television. Um, and part of that restriction is due to a decrease in the motion of the arytenoid cartilages, uh, and part of it is trauma. Because when you breathe hard through a narrow space, the forces of the air actually causes trauma to the tissues, and the tissues swell up. So restriction of the airway combined with heavy breathing can lead to more restriction of the airway. Uh, and so we sometimes have pets who come in who have gone from making noise but kind of doing okay to suddenly being in great distress. Um, the classic time this happens is when the senior citizen Labrador in the middle of the summer is visited by the grandchildren, right? Because the dog is just an old tired pooch who's pat patting around the house and does okay with their funny loud breathing, but then gets excited because there's a visitor uh, and someone plays ball in the middle of the summer and they don't notice that the dog's having trouble breathing and they keep going because it's a Labrador and it's a ball and they're not gonna stop for anything. And then all of a sudden, they've gone past their ability to, to move enough air. And so now they're in panic mode, they're turning blue. Um, the way that we treat those guys in the short term is we sedate them so that they relax past their anxiety. We supplement them with oxygen, uh, and sometimes that's enough to get them back to where they can breathe easily. Um, the problem is that sometimes that's not enough, and now we've got a big problem because if you can't breathe, that's a problem right now, right? Uh, and so the next step would be to actually put a tube into their airway so that we can help them breathe easily. Uh, and that can be done on a short-term basis by sedating them, anesthetizing, putting it into tracheal tube, uh, putting them on oxygen. Well, that's great for the right now, but it raises the question, now what, right? Perhaps if they are relaxed and they're not excited and the swelling goes down, you can pull out the tracheal tube and they can breathe just fine for a while until the next time someone plays ball, right? They get excited. Or um, sometimes that's not enough and we have to create a new airway. Uh, and there's the sneaky way to do that is called uh, tracheostomy, where we can actually make an incision through the skin into the trachea itself, um, which again is a quick right now solution, uh, but it's hard to maintain that. Um, there are some special instruments that can be used to keep that open, but the body wants to close that. It sees it as a wound that it wants to close. And so if you're gonna keep a tracheostomy open for any length of time, it takes some effort. Uh, it takes a special instrument to hold it open and then you have to clean it and change it and all that stuff. 
Um, a more long-term solution to the poor laryngeal function uh, is what's called a tieback surgery. Uh, now this is not done on an emergency right now basis, but once the pet's stabilized, it's something that we can consider. Uh, and the benefit of the tieback surgery is that this arytenoid cartilage, which is sort of stuck at half mast, can be pulled open and sutured in that location. So now the pet can breathe, um, which is good. Uh, however, they now cannot protect their airway, which means when they eat their lunch, there's a chance that food or water is going to go down their airway past their tie back. Um, and so, you know, it's one of those things in life where there's no simple, easy fix. Um, but it's an option for some pets to extend their life. The risk is now they're at risk for aspiration pneumonia. The benefit is they can breathe. So anyway, that's the, that's the story of laryngeal paralysis. Technically, there could be other things going on other than poor laryngeal function due to um, age and nerve dysfunction. There could be a mass or a tumor um, that could, would also restrict the airway. It's not very common, but that could happen. Uh, there are some medical conditions that decrease nerve function that we can check for. And if we find those, sometimes we can improve those with medication. But frequently, it is of this, an old age idiopathic laryngeal paralysis, which is a fancy way of saying you're old and it doesn't work, and we don't always understand why. That's the scoop. Any questions about that? Yes? We talked the other day about sometimes it does improve their quality of life enough to where they can live for months to years. Afterwards. Right. Yeah, you bet. So um, my sister's dog, the old tired worn out was his name? Wizard. Wizard. Wizard um, had laryngeal paralysis. He was paddling around the house, having trouble breathing. I did the tie back surgery and he lived for another year and a half or so. Um, couldn't exercise, but he actually did not get aspiration pneumonia, so he was able to extend his life pretty nicely uh, with a good quality. Not an athlete, but was, um, was not struggling to breathe. So, yeah, it's an option. Okay, that's it. Thank you.